Hi everybody, it's Erin Scott here. How are you doing? So I'm going to be looking at the astrology for the week ahead, and I'm recording this on March 27th, 2021. Tomorrow, Sunday, March 28th, we're going to be having a full moon in Libra at 8 degrees. And I want to talk to you about some of the details. I'm going to look at the Sabian symbology. We're going to talk about the planet Uranus in this video. And we're going to look at the general dynamics for this week. Before we talk about the full moon, which will impact directly the energetics of this week ahead, naturally, um, the one thing that I want to point out to you that's going to be unfolding in this week ahead, which is the week of March 29th to April 4th, we are going to have Mercury entering Aries. And that's going to be happening at 11:41 uh, p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday the 3rd. So a week from when I'm recording this, we're going to have Mercury entering a new energetic focus. And I'll talk about that in next week's weekly. Okay, so there's a couple of things to talk about here. Firstly, uh, this is a Libra full moon at 8 degrees 18 minutes, opposing the sun at 8 degrees 18 minutes Aries, with Chiron and with Venus. So we have eights, we have the eight moon, and then of course what we have additionally activating that eight energy is Uranus. Now, I, I woke up this morning with a very vivid dream about Uranus. So I'm going to speak to you about it because it is in fact completely correlated to the energetics of not only the full moon that's happening on the 28th of March, but certainly for this week ahead, the energetics, but really for the month ahead. So we have a month theme that we're going to be looking at here. Now, the first thing that we're going to focus on is the position of the sun. The sun with Chiron with Venus. This is you coming from the position of, as you're facing this moon, as you're meeting this natural cycle, you're coming from the perspective of uh, love and lovability. How, uh, how am I lovable? How am I valuable? You're also coming from the position of your skills as a teacher, as a healer, as somebody who is an expert in something. So your position as an expert or as somebody experienced and knowledgeable and wise with regards to various skill sets, your position as it relates to your worth and your value as a person with skills, okay? This is the perspective with which you are approaching this particular week, but certainly the next 30-day cycle. And how you can attain a certain desire set that you hold as it relates to relationship. So the desire has to, is connected to uh, creating, um, having relationships that are harmonic and peaceful and fair and balanced and justice oriented. So the desire naturally activated is for relationship, to be valued by the other and to value the other, ultimately. So there's this kind of recognition here, you know, the sun activating or spotlighting a narrative of relationships for you. That's what we're looking at, pure and simple. So there's something that gets highlighted, something that gets spotlighted. It could be about a past pattern as it relates to your relationship dynamics. How is it that you relate to people? How is it that you collaborate or cooperate with people? How is it that you're rather competitive with people instead of cooperative? How is it that you relate to people, right? And you're also going to be reflecting on how people relate to you because ultimately it's both and. How people relate to you is ultimately how you relate to them. Whether you understand that and see that or not, that is naturally the case. As within, so without. As without, so within. It's always a reflection mechanism. It's always a dynamic feedback loop. And the thing is, everybody... Feedback loop is the name of the game with the number eights. So there's something here about self-other that becomes, for some of you, recognized. You're able to understand that 
who you are is reflected in who they are and vice versa. So there is some sort of recognition for some of you that life is feedback loop, that there is some sort of a karmic process too, I think, playing out as well. Now, we also have Uranus at number eight Taurus. So the eight energies, what is eight? Eight is feedback loop. As within, so without, and the flow, dynamical flow, outward, inward, outward, inward. It's Taurus energetic orientation. It's the function of the Taurus. That's eight. It is infinity. So it represents, you know, timelessness and the flow of story. You know, as it was, so it is until it shifts by strange attractor and then it becomes something else. Okay? So there is all kinds of things with number eight. The eight as an individual can talk about you and your empowerment. How is it that you hold your power? How is it that you step into your power? How is it that you take action upon your inherent skill sets and your inherent worth and value? Okay, so you as an empowered person, how is it that you operate in your power or not? Do you tend to give your power away to the other versus owning your half of the relationship dynamics, owning your story about it, being empowered as you interact with people. So there's something about, something that gets revealed, let's say, for those that are open, for those that are awake, for those that are present moment oriented and consciously aware, this particular full moon in Libra is going to bring or can bring to those awake clarity about the dynamic, the power dynamics within your relationships. How much do you give your power away to the other? How much is it that they, the other, gives their power to you? How is it that you manipulate in order to gain or get power? Okay, there's all kinds of indications with the number eight. So one of the things with the number eights is karmic process. So yes, something will be revealed about relationship dynamics and what the truth might be about them the fairness and balance or lack thereof within your relationship dynamics. Um, there's also aspects of the past that could come out with regards to relationships. This could be a spouse or a partner. This could be a business associate. This could be somebody close to you, somebody of meaning to you. Any individual person who impacts you at a great level, there can be some clarity about past patterning or the dynamics of the relationship and perhaps what needs to be healed with it, right? So you as a, as a vulnerable wounded individual is also indicated here, right? There can be a vulnerability with regards to lovability and you become clear on it as it relates to how you, how you engage with people. Do you um, self-deprecate or do you stand in your power? Do you collaborate or do you compare? Are you completely so self-oriented with it when it comes to your own insecurities and woundings that you uh, overcompensate in some way? And that impacts the dynamic equilibrium that is the natural balance of loving harmonic relationships. Okay, number eight is also correlated, everybody, with the psyche. Eighth house, scorpionic psyche. So this is the stuff deep down. This is the shadowed aspects and patterning sourced by past experiences that are often in the human condition wounded. So there can be all kinds of wound signatures that come to light. How is it that your wound signatures distinct to your natal blueprint impact your relationships? Guess what? For those awake, there can be clarity here. This is very good. Now, let's talk about Uranus, because Uranus is playing the game with these energetics directly. Now, Uranus is a complex archetype, but it functions in that it operates fast, quick. It's a quickened energetic. It uh, operates unusually and distinctly and outside of the normal constraints. It also functions in a way of evolving. So it's constantly activated to a new, let's call it a new iteration. So evolution is a natural function of Uranus. When we're talking about Uranus in Taurus correlated with the second house, this is about your values. So there's evolution happening for all of us collectively 
and individually as it relates to a variety of things. One, what is your ethic? What is your ethos? What is it in life that you value? Number two, your sense of self-value. How do you love and value yourself? This is evolving. Now, karmically, over the course of this 30 days, because eight can bring up karmic process, okay? As we sow, so we reap. So there's something about this month ahead, everybody, that is karmic, karmic. So some kind of um, proper dues, either you owe dues or you gain them, okay? If you've served, you're gaining something here. There can be sudden abundance that comes to some of you with this particular revelation that occurs. Is there cooperation with somebody who indeed is part of your healing process, number one, but also part of your abundance here? You know, Venus on Chiron on the sun can be you healing and valuing yourself to such a great degree that a new dynamic occurs with all of the relationships in your life and this evolution of your self-worth and self-value which is the house venus rules taurus venus is correlated with the second house so there's an up leveling that's really a strong potential everybody with regards to this month ahead with regards to evolving your sense of self-worth now this is i think particularly key because in the wee hours of the morning, I had a dream about Uranus. Firstly, let's look at the image of Uranus. So this is the planet here, okay? This is a NASA image, and you can see that Uranus um, is at an angle here, um, but this particular image does not show the distinct nature of the axis. I think most of you realize that Uranus is essentially has an axis or has a has a an axis that is perpendicular to the equator of the planet okay so it's a very unusual um, formation or holding as it lives in the solar system it's a very unusual planet in that way it does in fact have rings in fact there are 13 rings that Uranus has a collection of them are, are uh, in the outer rings, and then there's a collection, a couple of them are on the inner area here. The dream that I had in the wee hours of this morning had to do with being with others in a room that was encased with glass, and we were looking out this massive glass wall out on the horizon line from Earth, looking out at the sky, and at the horizon line was a massive Uranus. Uranus was right there, massive, as if Earth was right up, pushed up against it. So this huge, massive Uranian structure was lowering, essentially, on the horizon line. It was bright, it was in the day, but it was lowering as if the sun was setting. But the sun was bright, the image was massive, and in the dream, there were two sets of rings where they were crossing each other okay so indeed Uranus does have two sets of rings okay but they are correlated with one another in the dream one set was this way the other was this way and they were glowing white essentially so there were the the the, the planet itself with these white glowing cross imagery that was part of the let's call it the glyph you know the structure itself had this form that was part of it now I have to tell you what I get from that I mean there was more to the dream but what I want to share with you is this what I get from that everybody is that there is a crossroads that is activated now do you understand let's close this down there's a crossroads, and I do believe that this particular month there is some sort of karmic. For example, if those of you who have prepared yourself correctly, you have been doing your inner work, you're following your call, you're following your bliss, you're following the promptings, things that you're here to learn or pick up, information that you're here to imbibe, actions and foundations that you're here to prepare for. Now I have to tell you, additionally to what I'm saying here, I just completed my member analysis reading, which I finished filming. 
it's uploading now actually a couple of little videos for my members but what I want to point out is this that indeed the narrative that came through in that analysis for my members is correlated to this astrology which I hadn't checked before literally I just pulled up the narrative astrologically for this particular Libra full moon you know an hour ago so this is fresh information but it happens to be correlated with the other messages that came through this particular thing is talking for me to give to you what I want to say is if you have prepared yourself your finances your structural elements the logistics of your life the foundations of your life if you have been following the call and answering the call you might find that that preparation is going to meet with opportunity in this next 30-day cycle okay that is the definition of synchronicity when preparation meets opportunity and I do believe that there might be opportunity arising some of that opportunity has to do with home or foundation some of it has to do with money and things some of it has to do with your self-worth and self-value coming from a greater level of evolution with regards to how you view yourself how you view your life how you understand that you're inherently valuable and matter in this world for you for all of you that have come to that place of deep recognition and clarity of truth then all kinds of manner of shift and change can be occurring now it can be seeded there can be new a strange attractor bringing in a new pattern of being and is that new pattern talking about relationship certainly yes it could be that okay now you're gonna notice there there's 13 moons to Uranus so <clears throat> I was just gonna pull this up so this is from NASA okay now there's all kinds of clarity that you can come to with regards to looking at the logistics for this planet okay so we have 13 rings here and I want to point that out right 27 moons which in itself is fascinating because there are 27 nakshatras in the Joytish astrological system right so we have 13 and 27 okay 13 if we talk about 13 if we look at the chart for this particular uh, full moon narrative that's playing out over the next 30 days what do we have at 13 but Ceres okay 13 Aries that's where Ceres is located now Ceres is the goddess of harvest this is abundance right what we're looking at here is I don't know right could it be that there's a potential for great abundance with regards to your nature to come out to be emanated for you to take action on first house Aries something that is natural to you something that is organic for you something that will create abundance for you not just monetary abundance but abundance of your energy your vitality your um your passion right so there's something about you that can be healed and transmutated as it relates to abundance and comforts you know creating a self that is in comfort and peace and harmony what is this Venusian self that wants to be healed and emanated out and reaching people from that place of self-love and healed the healed self you know you can see that the part of fortune here now I will say this part of fortune is correlated with this uh, archetypal chart Greenwich Mean Time and I did a zero degree Aries chart because we have the Sun already in this first house but this is the archetypal chart foundationally anyway but in this in this kind of archetypal chart the part of fortune a level of flow energetic flow vitality um, you know kind of again following your bliss is coming up here you know when you really attend to your your passions your drivers that are pure that aren't based on toxified signatures or stilted or partition signatures for those of you that can operate in a holistic functional way there can be abundance that emerges here there can be a level of receipt a return on investment perhaps okay now this is all happening while the North Node is still conjunct Mars as you all know on the 26th of March we had the conjunction of North Node and Mars at 
13 degrees. Again, the nodes with that conjunction signature were at 13, Mars at 13. And here we have 13. So there's something here about a new way to organize your mind, utilize your mind, organize your thoughts, utilize your mind, your mental function as a tool. How can you utilize your mind as a tool? Now, I don't say this to be manipulative with the natural function of your mind, but what I do say is this is about mindfulness and present moment orientation because there is an up-leveling. Keep in mind, Uranus has 13 moons. The conjunction was at 13. Uh, Ceres is at 13. There's something here about the 13 moons, you know? Moons represent your inner world, your inner truth, your inner desire, your inner meaning, everybody. What matters to you? There's something here about when you really orient toward your own self, your own truth, your own desires, your own self-orientation. Who are you as an embodied person on this planet? When you orient yourself in this way of the self, the healed, self-valued, loving self, that's where the abundance is. That's when you let that flow out. That's when you can really show up and create meaningful relationships based on harmony and balance. Do you understand? Now let's talk about some of the symbology. As it relates to the sun and Chiron and Venus, what do we have for the symbology? A crystal gazer. Now I'm going to turn off my highlighter here. Okay, so let's just focus here. This is the symbology activated naturally. This is the Sabian symbol, okay? So this is the Sabian symbology for the Sun, Chiron, and Venus all together at in the eight degree portal, okay, of the zodiac wheel. A crystal gazer. The keynote, the development of an inner realization of organic wholeness. Do you understand? I mean, this is completely correlated with what the astrology naturally is creating the signature for. The crystal sphere symbolizes wholeness. Within the sphere, images take form. These images may reveal future events, but more significantly, they picture the situation as a whole, the situation which the clairvoyant is meant to interpret. The nascent mental faculties operating through still dominant emotions or collective cultural incentives act as a centralizing and whole-making power. What the intelligence perceives in its concentration is the function of every inner impulse and outer events in the open field of a personality, still unclouded by egoism. At this fourth stage of a five-fold sequence, the new technique required for the development of individualized consciousness is revealed concentrated attention. Now, why is this so pristinely on point? Well, number one, this has to do with you as a whole entity. Number one. Number two, it's talking about focalizing the mind or creating a focused mind, concentrating the mind. Here, Mars in the mind, okay, third house, the way you think, the way you communicate is the evolutionary call to action, period. So for you to evolve how you use, how you act upon the mind, how you behave with and from a result of mind is the name of the game now. And this particular symbology of the sun, what needs to be healed about the self and your sense of self-love, self-worth, and self-value, and what ethic, what actions are you taking with regards to money? Are they ethical actions? You know, some of you are going to be watching this taking unethical actions with regards to a wounded self and the need to gain money, make money, manipulate others in order to make money. Via shadowed aspects here, an eight moon. This can be the shadowed unconscious that is playing out and it's utilizing people for deceptive or secretive, working secretively in the background in order to what? Gain money, gain income. So your ethic is called to mature here as well, on top of everything else. <coughs> now, let's talk about the symbology for the moon. Really fantastic, everybody. Let me take a little sip of my drink here. <coughs> oh. 
Okay, beauties, let's go over to Libra. Okay. Now, this is, I have to tell you, this is brilliant as well. This is the symbology for the moon itself. So there's something about this narrative that has the potential to be revealed to you during this month ahead. How open are you? How still is your mind in order to gain or glean clarity? That's the question. Three old masters hanging on the wall of a special room in an art gallery. The keynote, the need to return to source during a confused search for new value, that's Venus, in a chaotic society. This is all the changes going on here, okay? This is Uranus and Taurus. Our material reality is shifting, changing, and evolving exponentially so over the next several years, okay? There are always moments which focus in our minds the longing to reground ourselves in the great achievements of the past. The number three suggests completeness. Esoteric traditions speak to the threefold soul or the three fundamental rays of power, of love wisdom, and of intelligence in action. Meditation in its deepest sense is a return to source, an attempt to re-identify oneself with one's archetypal essence of being. This is your natal blueprint, everybody. For those that haven't, aren't aware of what your blueprint is and are interested in learning it, you can be in touch. Links are below. Um, let me re, let me reread that. Okay. That's a long sentence, but let me reread it. The number three suggests completeness. Esoteric traditions speak of the threefold soul or the three fundamental rays of power, of love wisdom, and of intelligence in action. Meditation, in its deepest sense, is a return to source, an attempt to re-identify oneself with one's archetypal essence of being, which is triune in manifestation. And now, after confused but challenging wanderings, to identify oneself consciously with this essence. So again, we're talking about mindfulness here. We're talking about conscious use of the mind. Mars, North Node, Gemini. The finer forms of one's culture provide the means to do this. The great moments of the collective past become an inspiration for new yet sound beginnings. The seed of tomorrow salutes the seed of yesteryear. Again, the dream was about the crossroads of the rings. So drink that in and f let it feed you however it does, because it's going to be distinct for every one of you. I do believe we're at a crossroads. Okay. At this fourth stage of the 38th sequence, it is suggested that in the process of transfiguration, the presence of the greatest moments of the past is called upon as Moses and Elijah were invoked in Jesus' transfiguration. The seed of the new day depends upon the seed of yesteryear for an experience of the cyclic continuity of spirit or consciousness. This is the basis for the institutionalized ideal of apostolic succession, the guru ampara, an, un an uninterrupted chain of gurus of Indian tradition. Okay, so there's something here about accessing the past for the future. It is a crossroads of the past paradigm, the past earthly existence, the, not only the lexicons of our current reality, but our generalized experiential paradigm of past is moving into a new future. There is a crossroads, and there's something about this moon. There's something about this moon, everybody, that is activating for hopefully more of you than less of you a realization of the truth of who you are, the truth of what your own stories are, your own skills, your own woundedness that is part and parcel to your skills, 
the value of your wounded experiences because you recognize that there's some responsibility here that you're to take. This trine of uh, Saturn to that nodal Mars in Gemini point is speaking to responsibility. There's a level of responsibility that some of you are going to recognize and feel and act upon as it relates to taking action on behalf of the community, Gemini. This is the community as well. This is the greater collective. This is the local community. It's like global to local. You know, there's a responsibility for the global storylines playing out and your participation in that. But working locally on behalf of global is kind of part of the signature that's very much activated here. So there's a recognition of your role in it, your worth, your value, your skills, your mastery. And as you come from that place of self recognition that how you see everything is based on your own stories, how you relate to people is based on who you are and how you see things. So the more there's more there's opportunity here in other words for more recognition of how you as a self and how your consciousness is storied and what the evolution with those stories, especially the toxic ones are, there's real potential here for a new collaborative harmonic dynamic to occur with how you engage with people and that will impact all of your life you know it's not just the spousal relationship or the boss or the customer client this is this is relationships in general here and relationships are the foundation of life living systems operate via relationship so everything is relationship there is strong potential here for a real wake-up call and it's beautiful. So I'm going to leave it there, everybody. For those interested, I do recommend getting your natal analysis done. It is in-depth. There's two versions that I offer, a foundational one and an in-depth one. And both of them are valuable, highly foundational, in fact. They're key elements to understanding the narrative that you're living and what you're here to evolve, right? What is your, what is your natural orientation in this life? There's confusion. There's a lot of people that, that don't understand their skills, that don't understand their patterning, right? So it's key to understand that in order to participate in full participation with your distinct narrative as you walk it forward, as you navigate forward, especially now. I mean, it's been the case for the last several years to really get that clarity. But in the years to come, exponentially, it's more and more important, ever more important to become clear on who you are, how you think, what the growth edges are, what the toxic elements are, what the patterning is, and what the growth arcs are with all of those patterns, right? Okay, beauties, I'm going to turn my highlighter off. I'm going to turn this off. I wish you much love for your moon, for your week ahead, and for your month ahead, and there'll be more to emerge. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.